Has it ever dawned on you that there could be an agenda or there has been an agenda that was put together to get us where we are today? The Alice Bailey effect, what we're gonna be talking about in this 10 part series, we're gonna cover what is this gender that was hidden in plain sight? How did we, what did she do? What did she write? What did she teach that was adopted that helped shape our society to be where we are today, in the trouble that we have today, in the chaos that we have today, in all facets of our life? The Alice Bailey Effect, it's a 10 part series and we're going to be addressing in the first part of this series, our educational system. What happened? What did she write? How has it affected our educational system and our children today? Alice Ann Bailey, born June 16, 1880, died December 15, 1949. Alice, Alice Bailey was a writer of more than 24 books on theosophical subjects and was one of the first writers to use the term New Age. Bailey's works, the books she's written, uh, they began in 1919 and 1949. They describe a wide-ranging neo-theosophical system of esoteric thought Covered, covering such subjects as how spirituality relates to the solar system, meditation, healing, and spiritual psychology. Alice Bailey was, was influenced heavily by a lady named Blavatsky. And it says, according to Mead, assembled her theories and doctrines gradually in a piecemeal fashion. Blavatsky claimed that these theosophical doctrines were not her own invention but had been received from a brotherhood of secretive spiritual adepts whom she referred to as the Masters or Mahatmas. Alice Bailey was influenced by this lady that goes by the name Blavatsky and others. And Alice Bailey wrote a 10 point agenda, uh, including other books and other works to bring atheism to the United States. And to this very day, the United Nations, or as we call it, the UN, protects and distributes her information. I don't know if they do that for anybody else, but for Alice Bailey, the UN is still the, 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 the group or the people that disseminate her information and protects her information to this very day. The Alice Bailey Effect, you know, we're getting ready to dig into what is this agenda? The, the first point on this list, of this 10-point list, that, by the way, was adopted by the United Nations. And we, we all know the impact that the United Nations has had on this country and all other countries around the world. But the first point in her 10-point list, her agenda that has really been hidden in plain sight, states this, take God and prayer out of schools. Asked his opinion of the Supreme Court decision banning prayer in schools, the president says, Well, I haven't seen the measures in the Congress and you'd have to make a determination of what the language was and what the effect it would have on the First Amendment. The uh, Supreme Court uh, has made a judgment. A good many people uh, obviously will disagree with it. Others will agree with it. But I think that uh, it is uh, important for us, if we're going to maintain our constitutional principle, that we uh, support uh, Supreme Court decisions, even when we may not agree with them. In addition, we have in this case a very easy remedy, and that is to pray ourselves. And I would think that uh, it would be a welcome reminder to every American family that uh, we can uh, pray a good deal more at home, we can attend our churches with a good deal more uh, fidelity, and uh, we can make a uh, the true meaning of prayer, much more important in the lives of all of our children. That power is very much open to us. And I would hope that uh, as a result of this decision that uh, all American parents uh, will intensify their efforts at home. The, the idea was to change the curriculum to ensure that children are freed from the bondage of Christian culture. Now the question is, she wrote this 
a long time ago. It was adopted by the UN. I mean, history bears this out. This is not uh, he say, she say, soliloquy, something I think about, but this is what the facts bear out. The United Nations adopted this 10 point list. And the first one is take prayer and God out of the schools. Her thought and claim was that the children are held in bondage to Christianity. She says that why should, do we want to do this? Because children go to school to be equipped to face life. They are willing to trust and they are willing to value what is being given to them. So because she recognized that children don't have the mental a fortitude to know what to discard and what to keep in if if they could be successful in getting rid of God and prayer out of the schools then they could give the kids what they want to give our children instead of the parents being able to instill in our children what we deem important what we deem uh, as necessary or good in the eyes of us as parents now, now, it goes on to say, uh, as, a, as a part A or part B of that number one uh, thing on the agenda, it says, if you take God out of education, they will unconsciously form a resolve that God is not necessary to face life. They will focus on those things. The school counts them worthy to be passed on, and they will look at God as an additional, if one can afford the additional. So now we need to look at history and see, did this actually happen? When did it happen? What are the results of this happening? Because he wrote this a long time ago. Now, all we got to do is look at history and go see what happened. So then we go to 1962. There was a Supreme Court case that decided that prayer was unconstitutional. It was Engel versus Vital in 1962. The Supreme Court ruled that school-sponsored prayer in public schools violated the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. And, and that case was argued and won and showed that prayer did not have a place in the public school system. Also, there was another uh, pivotal case that happened in 1963 in Murray versus Curlett, where the Supreme Court ruled that prayer and Bible readings in public schools were unconstitutional. Mrs. Murray has the, uh, Mrs. O'Hare has the flu, and we're delighted that she could come, and Dr. Bowman <laughs> flew all the way down from Washington to come. We'll begin by putting the subject under discussion to each of our guests, asking each to give us a brief statement of position in answer to the question, is atheism the religion of the future? Organized religion and traditional religion is dead. Not alone their God is dead, but everything else uh, is a rotting corpse. It's this simply because it is not relevant to what is going on. I find that the progressives and the liberals do one single thing, they coat the pill differently so that it can be accepted. But when you have it and you're hooked again, there it is. And it's just as fundamental as those weird old tales of the Old Testament. And it is just as irrelevant. Instead of throwing the whole thing out and starting anew with human values and human goods, uh, all of the religionists are, tr are tied uh, psychologically, emotionally, traditionally, historically, to these ideas that are no longer valid to the human community. And so now you see in just two landmark cases where it was argued that prayer could not be had in a public forum as in public school, but also not just prayer, but the Bible was now taken out of the classroom. Now. It is interesting that these things happen and people did them and the Supreme Court ruled on them without thinking what is going to be the consequence on our society, not in 1963, but later on down the road in the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. Well, in 2024, as we're talking today, we are two uh, generations past there. So now we can see what has been the outcome of what 
Alice Bailey wrote in this 10 point agenda. Now, the question is, who was behind Alice Bailey? Who, what force was driving her? What, what, was it God or Satan? Now we know God would not have anything to do with taking prayer or the Bible out of any public setting. We all need God. We all need prayer. Those things help keep our society in a good place. So it would only be Satan that would be behind Alice Bailey to even write this 10 point agenda. It would only be Satan that would be behind the UN adopting this agenda and, 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 and the other societies that played a pivotal role in shaping our society, like the Illuminati, played a key role in shaping our society through policies and procedures and laws. So now Alice Bailey writes to take prayer and God out of schools. Now to understand the effect, we can, we're gonna look at history and we're gonna look at some charts to see uh, how the numbers show us what happened. But, but to understand this in its fullness, I think it's a good idea to go back in history and look at another time where something similar happened and then we can see how it affected the society at that time. Now, we're talking about the French Revolution, a time in history that is so pivotal to this very day, it is still being talked about over and over again. And there's so much history that has been put out about it because the effect of the French Revolution, what came out of that, is still affecting our society today. Atheism came out of the French Revolution. Uh, secular humanism came out of the French Revolution. All of those things that are affecting our education system, our thought process today, came out of what happened in the French Revolution. Now, the French Revolution happened starting in November 26, 1793, and it goes to June or so, 17, 1797. And then we, something pivotal happened in, in 1798. But, but for what we're talking about, there was a three and a half year period uh, where they did everything to get rid of God out of civilization. They burned the Bibles, they, they erased God out of everything. And I mean, as an outgrowth of that, literally, they had a time of the week where debauchery had to be indulged in. And if you did not, there was a severe consequence about that if you did not engage. And so many marriages broke up because it was the law that you had to go and commit adultery. You had to go and mess up the marriage vow on purpose. And so marriages uh, broke up. Divorce rates went up. Uh, people were getting pregnant who were not married and abortion rates went up and all kinds of things took, were going on uh, at that time. But it had a demoralizing effect on the society. It says at the time, at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine, but human. The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combinations of the enriching of the few at the expense of the many, the combinations of the poor class for the defense of their interests and claims. The spirit of unrest, I'm reading this, listen closely, of riot and bloodshed, the worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution, all are tending to involve the whole world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed France. What convulsed France? They, were, they wanted a goddess of reason. They wanted to get rid of God. They wanted to get rid of prayer and anything dealing with Christianity, dealing with the church. And we see the same things happening today and so what we need to do is look at what happened in the French Revolution to understand what is happening today. So they got rid of God. They got rid of the Bible. They burned Bibles and made people indulge in all kinds of vile stuff. And they, got, they tried to erase God completely out of a civilization. Now, something happened when this took place because all of this was in the uh, in the educational system. So they took God out of society. So there was nothing being taught to the children. There was nothing being taught around, but it had a demoralizing effect uh, on the society of that day. When you look in history, this is what it says. Uh, and I just took a clip out to read to you exactly what happened. It says, with the flight of the Huguenots, 
but there were people in that society at the time who were Christians. A general decline settled upon France. Flourishing manufacturing cities fell into decay. Fertile districts returned to their native wildness intellectual dullness and moral declension succeeded a period of unwanted progress. Paris became one vast almshouse, and it is estimated that at the breaking out of the revolution, 200,000 paupers claimed charity from the hands of the king. So what is that telling us? That's simply saying that when they took God out of the society, when they erase God from people's conscience, when they force people to indulge in vileness and you could not pray and you could not go to church, all the churches were closed, it demoralized the entire society. There was a general decline in France. And right before they did this, it was unwanted progress. In other words, they were growing and flourishing and everything was so good. But as soon as they removed God, the society began to tank. It began to go down. And so it says Paris became one vast almshouse. So now when you read in the Bible, when somebody was begging alms, they were asking for somebody to do what? To give them something. Give me some money. Help me out because I'm down on hard times. And so it says at the height of this, at the breaking out of the revolution, there were 200,000 poor people claiming charity from the hands of the king. So in other words, uh, the homelessness went up. Uh, uh, the, 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 the industries in the society went down and there were more people leaning on the king for help. Why? Because this is what happens when you remove God from a society. When Alice Bailey began to write these things and the UN began to adopt them and they began to be disseminated in our society today, it should have been clear that there were going to be consequences to taking God and the Bible out of our educational system because this is exactly what they did in the French during the French Revolution and it had a demoralizing effect on the society there there was a general decline in the society industries begin to decline people's minds begin to not work because they don't realize that or we don't realize as humans moreover that it is God that causes our minds to flourish. He puts wisdom in us. We don't have wisdom in and of ourselves. We don't, we don't have the ability to do things without God's help. And so when they took God and prayer out of, the, out of the society in the French Revolution, there was a general decline. There were more people getting alms from the king than ever before. There were 200,000 poor people who are now coming to the king and asking for a handout. Hmm. Now, we come to today, many years removed. After the French Revolution, Alice Bailey begins to write these things. And I don't know if you heard in the introduction, she says a voice spoke to her, a man spoke to her, telling her it was time for her to write these things. And we know that had to be Satan himself. And she listened to the deceiver like Eve did and began to write things that were going to help shape our society. Now, she's not the only one that the devil used like that. Today, we're talking about the effect of what Alice Bailey wrote, taking God and prayer out of schools. Now, all we gotta do is look at history in our day to see what happened. Now, in 1962, that's when these Supreme Court cases, 1962 and 1963, and there were a few other cases, but the two mentioned were very pivotal in removing prayer and God out of the public school and university educational systems in our society today. Now, the baby boomers who come on the scene around 1964, uh, I mean, 1946 to 1954, I'm sorry, uh, they, they were right, they were the, 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 the ones right behind, be, well, before preceding this court case, right? So now when this court case comes to be, they are beginning to turn into parents, all right? And so now th these landmark decisions took place in 62 and 63. And then so you need, to, if we could look at a chart of the baby boomers and what age they would have been around 1964, the baby boomers were turning about 18 years old. They were beginning 
to come to the age of bearing children and getting married and so on and so forth. And so who is this going to affect? If they took prayer out of schools back in the 60s, then the 70s, the kids in school in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s were going to bear the consequence of removing God out of the educational system. So now all we got to do is look at history and see what happened in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s on into our day, uh, our current time today. So we look at this and, and the oldest boomer producing kids was 18 in 1964. <clears throat> in the 70s, when the hippies, those who were into, you know, you know, sock it to who you want to, free love, getting high and just, you know, we gonna, we, we'll, we'll have sex with whoever we want to. And that whole, you know, psychedelic thing going on, the hippies decide we don't have any authority. We can't get jobs. Uh, the system is not set up for us to have control. So we got to go back to school. So they go back to school to finish their degrees. By 1972, the youngest boomer is now producing kids. They're now 18 years old. That's in 1972. I was born in 1973. So I'm going to be in school about the time. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to be in school after this decision, but my generation is going to start bearing the consequences of this. And further up after me was going to get even worse. And history bears this out completely. So now in 1980, uh, you know, uh, 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 we have in, in, in Bible prophecy, we have what we call final movements. Things begin to take place uh, that show that the end of time is coming. But now in our educational system, along with prophecy showing that uh, final movements are happening, the end of time prophecies are taking place, we see some things happening in our educational system. Now, in 1984, we're gonna jump forward. Uh, in 1984, they have what they call a crime spree begins. Now in 1984, I was born in 73, so I'm 11 years old, I'm still in school, when these crime sprees began to take place. Now, who is gonna be committing crimes at this time? Those kids who are suffering, the, beginning to suffer the consequences of uh, prayer and God being removed, and the parents, the hippies that went back to school to get degrees and got immersed even further in this godless society, because many of them at the time, and they weren't in the church anyway. They were into doing whatever they wanted to do. So they go back to school and they are in a situation where there is no God anywhere. So now you have erased it out of the education system. Those parents are going to raise kids who many of them will become atheists. They will not even believe in God. They will have no knowledge of God. And so they're going to raise kids who what don't believe in God and they won't they won't instill in their children the necessity of having a godly life, of being a Christian and following godly principles. And so the society is gonna do what? The same as it did in the French Revolution, it's gonna to start to go down, down, down. And each preceding generation will be worse and worse and worse. So in 1984, this chart shows that a crime spree began. And it continued on into 1994, 1998, and then we have to, we, you know, we have to bring some other charts to show what happened after that. And so now we go through back in 1980. Now this is what the statistics, the statistics show. In 1980, there were a half million people in the in the correctional system, in jail, in prison. There were only 500,000 in the United States, and we're not even talking about around the world. 500,000 in the United States. But now this crime spree begins in 1984 and you begin to see the numbers tick up, but not even slowly. We have a doubling in four years, a doubling of the number of people in prison. It went from 500,000 to a million people in jail. And the numbers have just been rising. And so it says in 1994 that the crime spree continue going forward. Now, by 1994, there were a 1.8 million people in prison, just 
10 years later, another 800,000 people have been put in prison or jail for crimes that have been committed. And so what is causing this sudden surge in crimes? Well, it's those kids that were being raised in an educational system where God had been removed. So it happened in 1963. So by the time I'm in school in 1973, 1974, those kids are coming through, you know, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, on through high school with no God in their life at school. So if the parents weren't teaching their children at home about God, they were going, they were not getting any God at home. They were not going to church. They were definitely not getting any Jesus, any God, any Christianity at school. So now these kids are living a godless lifestyle. So what happened in, in France when they took prayer and God out of society, the whole society tanked. Industry failed. People, more people were asking for a handout. Things were going no good. They said that Paris was a giant almshouse. But right before this happened, everything was flourishing. Now, history will show that this went on in Paris for, so, for, for just a while, and they realized what had happened to their society. And based on what happened to their society, literally, they brought the Bible back. They brought church back because they realized if we keep it like this, we will just go further down. They realized that when God was around, when church was open, when, when, when you could go to church and be a Christian and live your life in the open, the society did better. So they brought him back. Oh, let's see what's going on. Now, by 1994, there's 1.8 million people in jail based on crimes they committed. This was the generation that came through school, the first generation that experienced a whole educational system without prayer and God being there. And they began to do what? Commit even more crimes. And so the jails are filling up. There's no answer to stop the crime spree. If you remember back in, in, in the 80s and the 90s, they were trying to figure out how to stop certain drugs on the street and how to take guns off the street and how to curtail this violence. And they had no answer. And now there, there's plenty of history, plenty of documentaries that show there is a correlation to a correlation between God and prayer being taken out of the school and the rise in crime. And so that's back in 1994. Now, I'll read something to you uh, that that uh, uh, something that was written about the Cultural Revolution that took place in the 60s. It said, "The judicial branch of our government, the Supreme Court of the land, declared prayer to God the Creator unconstitutional." in public schools. It goes on to say, this was the foundational stroke for taking God and biblical principles completely out of the educational system of the youth, which would lead to taking God out of this nation. For godless youth grow up and become godless adults. Godless adults make godless leaders, and godless leaders make a godless country. And it's the, it is easy to see that America that was founded upon uh, the, the freedom of religion, but that freedom of religion was to serve God, not to, not to become an atheist, but an outgrowth of that is some people were not going to believe in God. And so this freedom of religion protected people's right to not even believe in God. And so this nation began to raise godless youth who became godless adults, who became godless leaders, and our country has become increasingly godless. But what is happening to our society today? We can clearly look around and see it is tanking. The morality of this country is going further and further down. But now let's go back to see what these crimes look like. It says in 1960, uh, the moral decay in this country began, and that is true because this is when they took God and prayer out of schools. Now, just recently in our time today, Eric Adams, uh, the mayor in New York, says when we took prayers out of schools, guns came in to our schools. He was speaking at a prayer conference and he was uh, just delineating the facts. 
He says at an interfaith breakfast, he said, Adams seemed to regret the landmark U.S. Supreme Court ruling that banned school-sponsored prayer in 1962. When we took prayers out of schools, guns came into schools. Adams said to the applause from hundreds of religious leaders gathered at an annual event in Manhattan. Now today, the leaders are beginning to see, hey, we made a mistake back then allowing God and prayer to be taken out of the educational system. And now we have an educational system where our kids could go to school any day. And another child, a disgruntled youth, will come to that school with a gun and open up fire and kill a bunch of kids and teachers. And it is going on so much now that they are trying to figure out how do we put God back into the school system. Just like France realized, hey, when we took God out of society, it went the wrong way. We got to put it back in if we want our society to do what? Come back up. I'm going to read something else to you. It says, since the court outlawed prayer, the nation has been in steady moral decline. Former Secretary of Education William Bennett revealed in his cultural indexes that between 1960 and 1990, divorce doubled. Teenage pregnancy went up 200%. Teen suicide increased 300%. Violent crime went up 500%. And he maintains that there is a strong correlation between the expulsion of prayer from our schools and the decline in morality. Now, that is very clear. And what, what is so interesting is that we, this is not something we gotta guess about. And, you know, I think there's a correlation. We can look at the facts and see the correlation between when you took God out of school, when you took prayer out of school and Bible readings out of school, there was a decline in the quality of our children. They didn't believe in God. And when they became old enough, they began to commit crimes because they began to be depressed. They began to go through different things that were not happening when God was more the focus at home, at school, at church. And in that triangle, we were kept in a more protected state. But now removing it, that barrier, that protection has now gone away. And so there's charts here that show how the population growth went up and how the crime rate went up, how the marriage divorce rate went up, how teen suicide went up. And those numbers we just read are bared out in these, these charts where you see people don't want to stay married. Now they, they, they want to be married to more than one person. They, they don't love each other. They, they want to get divorced for any reason, don't want to work it out because when God is not the center of the relationship, we already know what's going to happen. Our, our cultivated and inherited tendencies are going to rise to the surface. We're going to be selfish and we're going to uh, not want to keep our vow to one another and be loyal to one another. We want to step out of marriage and go do whatever else comes to our minds. And so this is a direct consequence of what happens when you take God and prayer out of the educational system. It started in the lower grades and then it went to college. Now you can go to college and learn atheism in college. The teachers will not even espouse Christianity. They will espouse atheism, a belief that God does not exist. And so this one point, this number one point has had a catastrophic effect on our society today. Now the question is, this agenda that is hidden in plain sight is the thing that is most baffling. Someone came to Alice Bailey and told her, I want you to write. That, that person also, she says, told her she was going to have to have some discipline about her life and write these things and get them put out. And then there was the UN adopting it. Now, why they wanted to adopt it, I don't know. But they did and began to implement it. And our society began to be affected by it. Why is it an agenda? Because Satan, ever since he was put out of the kingdom, his whole goal was to overtake God's kingdom. So in the Garden of Eden, what did he do? He attacked God's creation through Adam and Eve and caused them to sin against God by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And ever since then, he has been on a, 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 
a, an, an, a mission to erase God from society. And whenever you can look around and see groups of people who did not believe in God, they did not worship God, their society, the morals declined. Even when God's people found themselves going astray from God, their own morals went down. As a matter of history, in the Bible, when you look at when Christ came, the prophet shows us that he came, what he saw was the impress of the devil on the faces of his own people. It's said that Satan had taken control of the people, even their organs, causing them to be involved in vileness. Well, it's the same thing that would happen today. Every time you take God out of something, it's going to get worse. And so it was taken out of our educational system by landmark decisions of the Supreme Court in 1962 and 1963, and we are bearing the consequences today. Columbine, uh, the Parkland shooting, Uvalde, uh, there are many, many other uh, shootings in school that have been taking place from a, a child or a youth that has been disgruntled. They're mad at somebody. Somebody said something to them. The other kids are being bullies and th they think the only way to handle it is to bring a gun to school and kill up innocent people. The only person that will be behind that is Satan. Just like the only person that would tell Alice Bailey to write these things is Satan himself because Satan's agenda is to erase God out of our children so that the children will be godless, they will become godless adults, they will make godless leaders, and godless leaders will lead a country to be what? Godless. And that's what we're dealing with right now. A country who is in a moral tailspin, the morals are tanking that now, our kids go to school now, and then we'll be talking about this more in the next segment, but our kids go to school now, <clears throat> and because the parents don't have as much control over what's happening at school, our kids are now exhibiting different kinds of behaviors. More on that in segment number two. But the violence that came out of removing God from our schools is quite evident. When you look at what happened in Columbine and the Parkland shooting and Uvalde and and man, I just can't think of the rest of them, but there are many, many more school shootings that have taken place. Now, uh, teen pregnancy went up. Um, I'm, uh, they, it, this Generation X that's, that was killing the, where this crime spree began, people kept trying to ask the question, what is going on? Why are these kids suddenly not being innocent? Why are they taking on killing other kids? Well, this is what happens when we take God and prayer out of schools. And so you may, want to, you may be wondering, what is the answer to this? Because there's this big question in the United States about church and state being separate. Now, brothers and sisters, the, quest, the answer to the question, the solution to this question of what do we do now? Well, I'll tell you this. Prophecy declares that our society must get worse that the agenda that Satan put out a long time ago when many of us were not even born, we did not even know that Satan had an agenda to take us down. Many of us didn't realize that till later on in life because as a child born in 1973, by the time I got to, to first grade in 1980, where I was six years old, or 19, yeah, 1979, 1980, uh, there was no way I was going to know or understand what was going on. I'm just thankful that my parents were God-fearing parents and they raised me in the admonition of Jesus Christ. They found God and they taught me God and taught me Christianity. But for those parents who didn't believe in God, they didn't have a grasp of God or a grasp of Christianity, they didn't give their children Jesus Christ. And many of those children started committing crimes because they began to deal with things uh, that they didn't understand. Whenever we open ourselves up to Satan, he walks in through the door. Satan is not allowed to kick the door in. He is only allowed to walk in a door that has not been closed and locked. Even though sometimes we may not necessarily in our minds be opening the door to Satan, but because we didn't close the door and lock it, he was able to push it open and come on in and begin to affect our lives. The music that our children are listening to we need to make sure 
that it is godly music. And even what we call godly music, we need to double check to make sure it's really godly music. The things we allow our children to watch on television and to watch on social media, we need to be careful and know what they're watching. As a little child, it would be beneficial to take social media away from our children altogether. Many of those who set up these social media platforms won't even allow their, their children to be on that very platform. That tells you something. But if we continue to be lazy and not monitor what our kids are doing and not disconnect them from certain things, then we're gonna to continue to have a generation that wants to be against God. The rap artists today, you know, when we first started listening to rap, when I was a little boy and it was coming out and we thought it was all this new thing, it was about poetry and all this, that very thing started off like that, but now, it's against God. Now these people have alter egos and they worship Satan outright in your face. And many of people today still don't believe that they're worshiping Satan. Satan now is not coming in through the back door being quiet. He is now coming out front, being on display to show these people belong to me. What is the solution? God is the solution. Bringing prayer back into the schools, may not be the necessary answer. We got to start at home giving our children God and making better choices for our own children. So where we can, don't send them to a, a public school that God is not there. Let's not send our kids to places where God is not espoused. Let's not involve our children in things where God is not around, where nobody prays and nobody acknowledges God. What we need to do now is corral our children under our wings and then make the sacrifices necessary to raise our kids in the admonition of God, in the admonition of the truth. There is a truth that we need to understand for this time. And if we want our kids to have God in their hearts and minds, we got to make hard decisions right now that will protect their future. Jesus is getting ready to come. And Satan is on very much display more than ever before. If we stand a chance to get control of our children and to introduce them to God, if they're still young, disconnect them from this world right now. But if we're lazy and we still wanna let the internet babysit our children and we wanna let cartoons uh, babysit our kids, the cartoons are vile these days. The things that they talk about, all is a result from taking God out of our educational system. And those people now are in leadership positions and owning companies and God is nowhere to be found. Our whole society, the fabric is breaking down because God is not at the forefront. And now Satan, because he plays both ends against the middle, he's taken a bad situation where God is not in society and those who he has deceived to be under his control now he's working both ends to have an outcome that is also not what God wants. He's trying to bring church and state together and it's going to produce laws that are going to hurt people who believe in God and want to follow the truth for this time. Those who want to keep God's law as it states, not try to take a part of it out. But those who want to follow God, Satan is working both ends against the middle. What is the answer? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We must be like Job. Stop looking to the institutions to help us serve God and make up our minds that we're gonna serve God according to what the Bible states, come what may. See you next time in segment number two.